Hey, welcome YouTubers. Welcome to the channel, Mr. Reef Buster. I am Monty, and today is episode 12 of the Project Nano Reef, and what we're going to talk about today is diatoms. Now, before I start, um, there seems to be some diatom on my camera lens, so let me clean that up really quick so you guys can see me properly. There we go. Okay, here we go. Much better, here we go. So, now that I got the diatom off my camera, we can talk about diatoms. And the reason we're talking about diatoms on today's episode is because my tank behind me had the diatom bloom, which is part of every new reef tank. That's a phase that every new reef tank has to go through. And mine already went through it. Um, the reason I'm blocking my reef because it's clean now it, it doesn't have the diatom i'm shooting this after the bloom happened but i'll tell you why i'm doing this shoot without having actually having diatom i actually shot this episode when the tank had diatoms and there was an issue with the audio um so i had to so i'm I have to reshoot this whole episode so that's why you know I'm blocking the tank because the tank is doesn't have any diatom. It's actually pretty clean. Um, but I do have footage from that original um, shot that I did, original footage, and I have inside view of the tank with the diatom. So you guys are probably looking at that right now when, when I had diatom in the tank. It was in the rock works, it was in the sand, it's everywhere. So I just wanted to talk about diatoms on this episode because it's very crucial especially if you're new if your tank is new or you're a new reefer yourself this is your first tank you're going through this phase and you're like what is going on what did I do to deserve this ugly face which is this is called ugly face uh, which every new reef tank will go through whether you like it or not this is inevitable there's no way to avoid this phase. You're gonna have diatoms, you're gonna have some algaes as well, um, but what you have to understand is um, why they're happening and what you can do to prevent um, them over, you know, overwhelming you or your tank. So it's a balance, it's a balancing act that you have to do. You know, it's, it's A, you can't avoid it, so you have to just go through it, but B, you don't want it to be um, too much where you don't do anything at all and then you it just overwhelms your tank and just kills everything in it so today we're going to talk about the diatoms so diatoms uh, are not algae contrary to popular belief they are not algae um, they are similar in a way but they are really not algaes at the end of the day diatoms happen because of silicates there are silicates in every new tank that will cause the diatom bloom and what the diatom bloom will do in turn is when it's finished it's gonna be it's gonna be the food for the bacteria that's in your tank so they can grow more so you want a diatom bloom in your tank it's actually beneficial for you because what it does is when the diatom phase ends those diatoms the brown stuff on your rock work or your sand that becomes food for the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria in your tank, so they can they can reproduce. So it, it it's ugly, but it helps you out too at the end of the day when it's gone. But what that face should tell you is that your tank is maturing, which is a good sign. You want your tank to mature, and you want to set it up for success from this point on going forward. What you do going you know going far from here to the next couple of weeks <coughs> or months sorry will set you up for either success or failure in this hobby because you're gonna have to be testing your water so once the diatom hits you have I mean you should be testing your water regardless every week um, I am guilty of not doing that but that's something I'm trying to change so right after the diatom bloom happened I tested my water I wanted to see the perimeters so phosphates I checked there were zero phosphates so which is a good thing 
Um, but you never want to have zero phosphate. If a test kit is telling you zero, um, I would take it with a grain of salt because either you did the test wrong or the kit is wrong or something is wrong because it's rare to have zero phosphates. You should always have a little bit of trace elements of phosphates um, because your, your corals need phosphates too to grow. But too much of the phosphates will also encourage algae growth. So you don't want too much. You don't want like zero. I mean, if it's zero, you should retest it. So I retested it, and it was zero again. And I, I use Hannah checkers to uh, to test my phosphate, and it read zero both times. So, and I did it the same day. So I'm like, I'm gonna give it another week before I do the next water change. I'm gonna test the phosphates again. And after I do the water change, I'm gonna test the phosphates again. So two times. And once I do that, I'm gonna, I, there should be some sort of phosphates in the tank. I mean, cause I'm feeding the tank, there should be some phosphates. I'm reading zero on my hand checker. And keep in mind, um, this is the first time I tested the phosphate with this new setup. Last time I used that phosphate, the hand checker, was about a year ago when I had the previous version of this reef tank so I was kind of I'm kind of sketchy on that zero phosphate we'll know when I do the next uh, next we're gonna do, do my test we'll know for sure what the phosphates are um, I mean if it says zero on it so if it says zero next week that means I would have done this test four times and it's reading zero I'm gonna go with it and, and run run and see what happens. Uh, as far as the other elements like um, the calcium, the calcium, the alkalinity, and the magnesium, um, they're kind of low, and I'm not sure why. I'm gonna have to do a water test and see, check the um, check the levels. But I got my app here, Reef Trace. So let me just give you guys the exact results. So. So calcium was at 419 ppm, which was which is okay. Um, 420, it's okay. Uh, phosphate was obviously zero, like I said. Alkalinity was a 6.3 dKH, which is really low. Um, that's not ideal for a reef tank, so I want my alkalinity to be a little bit higher, um, seven or eight, preferably eight-ish. And magnesium was at 1120 ppm. That's low as well, uh, you know. I think the minimum recommended is 1,200. You want to be there. Um, so we'll do a water change. Um, I'm gonna probably do like a 50% water change and retest after and see if the water change helps these levels go back up. If they don't, I mean it should because the salt I'm using is <coughs> really good salt. Um, it's the Red Sea Coral Pro salt I'm using. So it should make the test, you know, the, the levels go up. But we'll see. Um, because I have no corals in this tank to be using up all those, you know, the alkalinity and the calcium, all that stuff. So there should be no reason. Only thing I'm, I'm thinking about is maybe um, I haven't done a water change on it in like three weeks. That could be it. So when I do a water change after this video, on the next episode, I'll, I'll update you guys if the levels go up after doing the water change which it should but I'll keep you guys posted on that so with that being said let's go back to the diatoms so diatoms is inevitable like I've mentioned on a new tank and it ca is caused by silicates silicates are introduced in your tank um, through multiple ways it could be through the sand the dry rock that you bring in um, your equipment you know the plastic equipment anything that's submerged in the water the pumps um, they all have silicates in it um, because they're fresh they're brand new and when you run everything silicates will cause the diatoms to come but it is not here to stay it's gonna come you don't have to do nothing you just leave it alone no need to brush the rocks no need to siphon I mean the sand you don't have to do any of those things you just let it be it will go away now what you should be doing is what I did if you don't want to you should not have to put your hand inside the tank to get rid of the diatoms 
there are other ways of doing it and I did that on this one and I'll show you, I'll tell you guys about it so right after the diatom bloom happened the whole tank was brown I realized it's time for a cleanup crew because prior to that I did not have a cleanup crew because there was no need for a cleanup crew tank was fine there was nothing on the rocks there's nothing on the sand so now that there's diatoms I went out I got myself the first set of cleanup crews and I introduced my third fish the third fish I'm not gonna reveal it yet you guys will see it on when I introduce the fish to you guys um, is a tang obviously but which tang it is you'll see on the next episode this I'm going to, this is a, remember this is a retake, because I've done this video already and I went and got the, the cleanup crew and the, the final, final fish, the tang. So, I can't really, I don't want to reveal what I got, but, cleanup crews, you have to get a cleanup crew, they will take care of your diatoms, they'll take care of any algae issues that you may be having as well, because after diatoms, it will go away, the tank's going to be clean, the algae's going to come after. And what you do before the algae comes is very crucial because you want to be ready to battle the algae to make sure it does not outgrow everything in your tank. So, at this point, you should not have any corals in your tank. I know we all get excited. You go to the fish store. I mean, I, I'm guilty as well of doing that. But you have to control yourself and not put too many corals in your tank. You want to put one or two fine but don't go crazy buy colonies buy like 10 15 corals and put it all over your tank because there's a high chance that they might not live because the algae is gonna come they might grow all over the corals and suffocate it and kill it so you don't want to do that that's a mistake I made the previous version of this tank I want to refill Palooza tank was already I got the corals, I spent like more than $300 worth of corals and put them in, they were good for a week and then algae started taking over and killed them. So don't do that. If you want to test how a coral grows or you know if the tank is ready, just buy one or two, buy some hardy soft corals and see how they do. Don't buy expensive corals, put it in your tank right now, you should not be doing that. Okay, your tank is still needs to mature before you introduce <coughs> SPS or even LPS some LPS depends so you don't want to you, you want to give it time uh, no need to rush this is not a hobby where you can rush things if you're a type of person who likes to rush you're gonna have a hard time now uh, I was like that I still probably am in a way hey, but you don't want to do that you want to take it slow so cleanup crews will take care of that um, especially beneficial fishes that do more than just look pretty in your tank they have a dual purpose so there are plenty of fishes out there that have more than just looking pretty or just filling up the tank you know they serve a better purpose like some fishes will eat certain types of pests you know some fishes will eat um, different different fishes will eat different types of algae so look out for that and pick a fish that's going to benefit your tank. So that's the reason, see, when you, when you guys see the final fish I got, you'll see why I got that one as opposed to something different. I mean, there were plenty of better looking fishes than that that I wanted to get, I could have gotten, but they wouldn't have served the purpose I was looking for. So that's why I went with the fish I went, but that's on another episode. Back to diet times, guys. Um, so at this point, you should be testing your water, like I said check for phosphates you don't want your phosphate levels to go high um, because it does that's going to promote algae growth I mean algae growth is going to happen regardless because the next step after diatoms is algae but you want you don't want the algae to go crazy you don't want the phosphates to be so high that it's promoting crazy amount of algae and just overtake your tank you don't want that you want a little bit of algae but you want to so you want a little bit and you want enough so your cleanup crews could control it once it becomes overwhelming for the cleanup crews they're not gonna do anything you know then the tank's gonna crash you know you might not continue with the you know the tank and that's when a lot of people you know leave the hobby because 
they can't keep up. That's what happened to me. I left the hobby for a year because of um, because of algae issues that I had on the previous version of this tank. Um, if you see the previous episodes of this Nano Reef episodes, uh, probably ten and ten and above, ten and um, ten and before, you'll see. You'll see that tank, and I had some beautiful corals in there, and they all died, and it was a disaster. So, and, and I lost hope, and I left, and I left, you know. But, but yeah. So, die times, it's something that you is beneficial. It's gonna happen on a new tank. Um, phosphates are not a reason for diatom growth. Diatoms do not need phosphate to grow. They need silicates. So the diatom bloom is only going to happen once. Unless you introduce brand new stuff again to the tank, then they'll bring along more silicates. So if you have most of your equipment already set up and running, this should, this, the diatom bloom should only happen once, and after that, it should go away. If you have a cleanup crew, They'll clean up the diatom faster as opposed to letting, you know, letting the algae eat them. You know, you could wait it out without a cleanup crew, but I would recommend this is the point you want to get the cleanup crew because after diatoms, algae is going to happen. <coughs> so you want to have the cleanup crew that are there already in the tank so they can take care of the algae. Okay, so that's what I did. So that's it, guys. Uh, this episode, I just wanted to focus on the diatoms because a lot of people are asked, you know, can I avoid the diatom bloom or the ugly phase and just skip to the pretty part? You can, unfortunately. It's part of the reefing hobby. It's going to happen to you, but you want to be prepared. You know, take the hint and just go along with it and do the right steps. You're going to be fine. I did it to my tank on episode 13. Um, this is what you can look up. Episode 13, I'm going to reveal the fish. And I'm also going to reveal another another new addition to the tank as well. And yeah, we'll go from there. Episode 13 is going to be quite exciting. You're going to get to see my mixing. I'm going to show you guys my mixing station setup, how I did it. And before that happens, I got some videos that are pending that's going to be coming up. So you'll see on episode 13 all the livestock in it and you're gonna see the invertebrates that I put in and we'll go from there because after that it's just a waiting game um, till June when I go to Reefapalooza and spend a whole bunch of money on corals and stock this tank up so until next time guys thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button and the bell and leave comments below if you have any suggestions, put it in the comment section. If you have any advice, put it in the comment section. Uh, so until next time, take care. Peace out. Happy reefing.